<laughs> All right, and we're live. <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, welcome everyone. Shall yeah. I? Would you like to do the? I think it's my week. All right. Right. Mm -hmm. Your week now. Yeah. <laughs> my, my forty-five minutes. Okay. You know, because they won't give me. They won't give me a full hour. So. All right. A month or two. <laughs> yeah. No, it's our time. So, welcome everybody. Um, let's start with a prayer. Does anybody want to volunteer to <coughs> say anything? I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just take a moment and and elevate our thoughts and let's just remember why we're here or maybe we're wondering why we're here. So we need to think about why we're here. But we all came here for a reason and uh, hopefully, hopefully each of us will get something out of the work we're here doing tonight. And planting the seeds in our hearts that will, will grow and blossom and bear fruit. And with our work reaching out to others, that we can be the light that shines in the world. And not just by our words, but through our deeds, people can see that this light is inside of us. So with that, we're grateful to have this place to meet and this space that we can just be ourselves and um, that we ask for permission to get our work tonight. So be. So be it. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. So. That was great. Um. Yeah, I think I'm pretty good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you might have rushed a little bit. What was that? Earth, the cookie? <laughs> yeah. I had a lot of sugar. Big I cookie. think I ate three cookies before cookie. I got here. Oh my. And for those of you that are watching on the internet, the cookies yeah, are here. Yeah, it is a box of cookies. You have to be present to get a cookie. Do you need this to mark your book? That would have been nice. Especially like yes, yesterday. But, you know, today, I'm it's gonna, a thought that counts. Flags are good. No, I have some flags. Actually, they're very, they're very handy. The first time I read my book, like I just read it, and then the second time I started putting flags in. I'm like, oh, this is where I need to remember. Um, but I haven't flagged this book. So we're here today talking about the priest. And yes. I know we've all done our readings before we got here because we're all so well prepared. That's right. And we're not just going to make it up as we go. Yes. Um, but, um, <laughs> That's right. yeah. Not like some of us. Um, so, well, oh my. Um, how do we begin? So, Alan Kardec is having a conversation with a priest, and it's interesting in light of, like, um, you know, as we're reading the book, first we we're talking about the critic, and we're talking about the skeptic, and kind of like, um, like a, you know, I never, I didn't really know what to expect, but the conversation with the critic, like, was kind of uncomfortable, and this conversation with the skeptic was was more like two people talking, like more rational. I felt <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't like two people kind of like, uh, like the with the critic it was like, the critic was kind of rude towards him. I felt the skeptic was just like generally interested, but then the priest. Um, I was really like kind of surprised the way that the conversation went with the priest because it seems to be I haven't read the whole chapter yet but I've read it up to you know about halfway and, and it's like the priest is pretty seems like a pretty rational priest I would say but I don't know what you guys made of it apparently the uh, I didn't read the whole thing it seemed to end I didn't think it was oh yeah he's right it kind of cut off at, at it was the cut end. off so yeah. I was, I'm a little uh, at sea here no, I sent you, did, did you get until the page, like, uh, 91? I because that was only, like, one, two, three, four, five, six pages, that's all. I probably didn't get all of it, because all I got was uh, the... Uh, four questions. I uh, uh, warning the priest about... Uh, but how many questions, because I... I I numbered. I didn't get any like questions. Really. No, no, I number every time you read priest yes. with the questions, I numbered. You see, you got six. There you go. You got there it all. Were, there were six on there? Yeah. yeah. I have six on mine. Well, no, there, there was six pages, but on the very last page, it was almost like it was in the middle of a response. 
And it was only like one, That's true. It was only like one what, paragraph. What happened? Yes. Yeah, so, but he's talking about the first one. Yeah, the we're, first page? Yeah, we're we're only really talking about yeah. the first three first question. questions or something. Yeah, oh, the today. first three. Oh, sorry. I don't, I didn't, so, yeah, we didn't send out the whole chapter. Okay. Not the whole you, chapter. You had underlined the question? No, I, I just... I just sent the pages that he's going to talk about tonight. Okay. He's going to discuss tonight. Okay. Not everything, because it's too big of a file, and it would it would it doesn't work okay. if you send the. I should get the book up. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good book. It's a pretty good book. It's a pretty good book. <laughs> but anyway. Got so much reading to do. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and that's all right, because even if you haven't read you know the chapter already um that uh there's plenty well I mean, we're just here to talk about it you, you can kind of get it from just from our conversation i'm sure um but, but you have book I you have my book but you you were saying about the, the, this book the <laughs> priest you know, the first thing alan kardec says is that he says like he kind of says like stops him in his tracks and he says i just want to let you know i'm not here to convert you to spiritism you know, right. and it's not my goal. I, I thought that was kind of like interesting, and especially coming here for a while, because I I never felt like there's any pressure on me to become a spiritist, and especially you know when we find new people, like we we like people, we want people to come, but it, we're not like pushing them like you know if you don't become a spiritist, you, it's not going to go so good for right. you. <laughs> you know, we're not like like that. So what did what did you guys think about that? I, I ran into it. Uh, all the time, you know, people are asking me about it, and uh, I, I try to not proselytize. You know, I, I tell them, look, if you got questions, uh, that's that's fine. I'd be happy to answer it, but I can't give you a whole course of spiritism because I, I haven't really uh, gone that far in it myself. Um, and it takes a lot of reading and so on. So don't expect me to tell you, uh, you know, what's involved. And, uh, uh, just. It's very hard to have a discussion with you unless you have had some preparation for it. Huh. I, I um, in, in my experience, I think that's that's the natural order of it. Um, it's about information, and I think as I was introduced, and I see others are introduced, and as the lectures always continue, it's it's about information, um, and. You can deduce it by you know, understanding that, wow, that makes sense, you know, this is good, you know, this is in reference to Jesus frequently and his teachings, right, and, and these kind of things. So, um, you know, you're open to form your own opinion. And then we didn't, you know, there's no, um, there's no pressuring, it's just we're here sharing information. I think part of that is what I've collected and when I speak to someone about it, a, a book was given recently by me. Um, and my introduction was that it's this, uh, you know, so the basis of you know, Jesus' teachings, in fact, in the Bible, and part of Jesus' teachings talked about others would come uh, after him to continue the message, you know, and with more information about um, the truth and, and uh, good and compassion and humility and charity. And I just left it there. I just left it very open. I found myself doing the same thing. You know, checking, you know, Explore it. It, it. it should make sense to you, but uh, take a look. And I think that whole relaxed, um, you know, ambiance—if that's the right word—of this is what's also appealing and allowing people to to take their own approach. There's no standoff, you know. There's no ooh. There's no oh that you believe. It's just it's information that you get to take it on your own. This is my you know my grasp, and this is how I even talk to people who never heard of it before. Um, and I think it's a beautiful thing the way it unfolds in this in this way. Anybody else have something to say about it? I found the, the consistency. I like the consistency in Kardec's words, like the the same way he was um, in the beginning, right in the beginning, right in the first page. The same way he was approaching to the critic and the skeptic the same way uh, he is trying to uh, explain like to give an introduction to the reverend to the priest I see a consistency of words and of purpose of objectives and I like that I like the consistency I was kind of curious 
uh, like to analyze if he was going to change his type of words or dialogue according to the you know person that he was talking but I see a consistency here and I like that and very clear very consistent and and um, giving the importance that the freedom of conscience uh, I really like that in the beginning you make I, it clear like in the beginning I change myself sometimes like I'm new you know so sometimes if I'm talking to somebody that I know is like very religious I'll, I'll kind of leave out the part about like talking to the dead people you know, <laughs> like just sort of leave that out. Be like, yeah, you know, when we study Jesus' words, we sort of study them more in depth. And, and I'll try to, like, highlight the really, like, good, like, parts that really, like, line up with religion, but I'll kind of leave out, like, the the mediumship and the stuff like that. I see. Yeah. And it's difficult, you know, when you're talking to somebody, you say, how old are you? You say, oh, I'm about 1,400 or so, you know. You know or, uh, I'm 10,006, you know. How does that work? You know, like, I like to tell people I'm a highlander. So you got you got to step into it. You know, <laughs> there's there's more than one highlander. <laughs> um, so yeah, anybody else want to talk about that? I, I just want to mention, um, Kardec warns us about uh, people who don't believe in God or. Uh, or, or the immortality of the soul, you know, just don't bother. Just, just don't, don't waste your time. It's just the, uh, exactly. Yeah, he makes that very clear. Mm -hmm. In fact, I ran into that recently. Uh, they were asking me questions, and I asked them, you know, right. well, do you believe in God? Well, not really, you know. Okay, and do you believe you know, have a soul and it's immortal? Well, I never thought about that. I, 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 and they were asking me about spiritism, and I said, well, I, I, I don't think we can really have any basis for the discussion. Actually, wow. Yeah. True, actually, based on how that conversation went, that's the only way you could answer that. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, I think also um, that Kardec here, he's... I have the feeling that he's speaking to a rather open-minded priest, um, and because he makes this long introduction without being asked about anything. It's just you know he's saying okay in relation to spiritism and uh, the church, which I assume it's Catholic Church, but I don't know. It could be. It doesn't say really. No, it doesn't say. It doesn't say. It could be anything. Yeah. Uh, but Reverend, but partly, Reverend is not Catholic. But partly it is because he, he speaks about the bishop. So, yeah, it's true. Um, That's true. But the priest, he, he won't respond anything. He won't reply uh, to any of those um, allegations uh, or you know to, to the statement of Calvec. He will just okay, and I'll ask you a question. And you know he goes on to ask a question, and that. That's very open-minded, so um, it's just something I noticed, but this is not, uh, for the most part, it has not been my personal experience, and um, reading this, uh, this part of, uh, of uh, what Kardec is saying, uh, he, he brings up the uh, the freedom of conscience and that ability that we all have to go within ourselves and, and search for the answers within ourselves and we should be respected, that should be respected. Um, and for me that's a big deal uh, because I was always, while being in the church, I was always questioned about that uh, and I was always um, say the message that I got uh, for the most part was that if I was thinking or feeling anything different, even in good conscience, uh, that that was a problem that I had. And there were different names for the problem. Uh, there was the name of lack of compromise, 
or uh, willing to have a, a religious experience a la carte uh, that I would you know, make up myself and many other things that made me feel bad but uh, even feeling bad about it uh, I knew there was something wrong so it was just not my you know lack of compromise or anything like that so I, I did appreciate uh, those words from Kardec and that's for the most part how not that, that's completely how I feel uh, while studying and practicing and living and spiritism. Yeah, I mean, because I was thinking about if you kind of turn the tables on, on this argument, I don't know if it's an argument, but turn the tables and say, how do other religions sort of treat the same topic? <laughs> like, you know, and how do they go about it? They're not, I don't feel like they're so open minded as to say, like, well, we respect whatever you believe. <laughs> you know, like, they usually want to say, like, well, this is the word. This is the way it's got to be, and if you don't agree with it, then you know you're gonna burn. <laughs> you know? Mm. So, mm. I mean, Kardec's very open-minded. He says, you know, if you believe it or don't believe it, it's not gonna make it any less less true. Mm-hmm. So, I, I I I really enjoy you. Know, yeah, any I I think from what I I see is in the beginning it's kind of hard to understand <coughs> his thought. How come you are you have freedom of conscience and how come but then later on when you start to learn about the the multiple lives the nature of the life the multiple lives make multiple existences we have we start to understand that later on in the beginning it's very hard to understand this because you have the impulse to tell others to believe in that but it's very hard and that's why we shouldn't do it we shouldn't try to introduce that to someone that it's not looking for more answers or it's not satisfied with the philosophy or religion that they have at the moment because you just start to understand this concept the freedom of conscience when you understand that we have multiple lives and that we understand that that we are the ones responsible for our development, for our own development. And this is something that you need more substance, and more material, material to try to, to start to understand why we should mind our own evolution and leave others to, you know, decide to whatever idea they want to stick with. I, I sort of felt that way when I first started coming to the meetings here was that I wanted like people to know because like I said I found some like a bit of truth you know and you need to know this you know mm-hmm. and then I, I was actually kind of self-righteous about it because I would meet people they'd be talking about their philosophy and I'm like well I, don't, I got my philosophy <laughs> you know, like, and, and like I, I, I mean this is just in my head you know but and I knew like it was kind of like this like it didn't feel it was, it was a good thing I didn't like tell everybody you know I was kind of quiet about it but it was really kind of like a, this mm. thing going on in my head and I started thinking about it I said even like people like um, like there's good people who are you know like your traditional Christians they're, they're good people you know they, they do good things they do charitable things they you know they help people like you know all the things that we're supposed to do as we learn about spirits and the things we really like should be doing and a lot of them are actually doing more good than a lot of spiritists that I know, <laughs> you know. So it's like at one at one point you realize like it doesn't really matter like what you believe, like what you do is is more important. Um, so um, it it kind of you know, and then it kind of like look at me like what am I doing, <laughs> you know, like what what am I doing with my life? Um, but at the same, I just want to say that, I mean I don't think it's necessarily true about just worrying about yourself because why why write the book, right? Why, what why would he write? The, like if it, if spiritism was mostly about letting other people, oh, I see. you know, mind their own business and you know take care of their own you know evolution in their own life, uh-huh. why write a book? Hmm. Well, I can only talk for myself. I see one thing is when we share this idea, but at the end of the day, when I go home, it doesn't mean. Although I I like what I hear, 
But at the end of the day, I will decide what I agree with, or I will disregard what I disagree, and I will take for, but nobody will know, actually. This is something very, in Spiritism, we are, it, it, this environment of, I'm not asking what you're pursuing, what are you looking for, what are you trying to learn, because right. there are so many segments in this philosophy, but it, we, we don't have this, um, we, it's not a, a common thing to them all. So what are you looking for here in the spiritism? And what is it so that you're trying score? to learn? What, you the test? what are you, what are you trying to learn here? What is well, your... Well, I'm just, trying, I'm just saying it at the same time. It's, it's, very important, it's important to... to, to um, to not keep it for yourself is what I guess I'm trying to say. I you know, see. To, of course. You know what I mean? Like, I um, agree. I agree. Not, not, not to, not to worry about your. I was, it's kind of a, a weird way to say it, but knowing what you know, right? You have to somehow. Mm-hmm. Sh- 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 not force somebody Spose. to do it, or you know, hold them by you know, by knife point or gun point, say you know, read this book. But right. like, it's kind of like, you know, introducing them, kind of. I totally agree, and you know I, do I, mean? that. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. I do that. I think I think I think we're all talking about the same thing. So there's um, I think that we're not trying to project our opinions and this is what you should be doing and you need to study this attitude. I think what you're saying is true. I think the the adoption is a natural adoption. This is the way it was done, right? The way Jesus said others would come and they'll teach you more and they'll reinforce what I'm going to teach, what I'm teaching you. I'm telling you. And the stuff I'm telling you now, you don't even know yet. You're going to figure out that stuff later also because I'm talking in riddles over here. Mm-hmm. Right? So all of that applies. So now here comes uh, the spiritism where messages are coming from and through different people from all around the world. right? And it just so happened that there are some that are now cataloging these in books. right? And Alan Kardec is a, a catalyst for this. right? Um, so the answer is yes, it is. It, it's for our own personal growth, but it is propagating from one to another, but without force. And I think that's kind of mm-hmm. what we started to talk about. There's no pushing on. Yeah. It is, it, the cool part is, because we all feel what that's supposed to be like, none of us is pushing on anyone. We're all exposing it. We're discussing it. In fact, what I said, hey, we're just sharing information. It's just an easy way for me to say it. So you're right. Um, and uh, the fact that we're nobody's imposing another good word, I think, for this on anyone. It's like, hey, you you can deduct from your own reasoning. You know, there's, the, hey, that's a good thing. And, and then if, in contrast, even in this article, in this particular section, they talk about, well, then if you see something that's abusive and negative, you know, you're going to know it's the opposite of that. You're going to know that's something you would oppose. We don't have to tell you you should oppose that because it's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. So it allows you to form your own opinion. Right, so you're right that it is. It is. Um, it needs to be shared, but not necessarily what we're discussing and what Kardec is doing is it shouldn't be imposed. It's not being right. right. We're all, we're all right. feeling the same thing. That's not mm-hmm. being imposed. It's being shared and offered. And it is the personal side was that it's to be used because we can only change ourselves. Right. And other people may change by witnessing the change in others, but you didn't change them. They changed themselves. They, right? So they elevated themselves. Their, their moral escalation is on themselves. So I don't know if it was Luigi or somebody said, you know, this country, right, or this world, we're technology rich and morality poor, but we're improving every day. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think, I think it's tricky because you, you mentioned, like, when we say mind your own evolution, it's sort of like a tricky thing for us to sort of find. It's almost like like humility. Like with humility, it's one of those things. If you think you have it, you don't. If you don't think you have it, you do. Um, <laughs> and we say mind your own evolution because <laughs> what we're really trying to say is like don't judge other people and where they're at, you know. But it's not about like just it's not about being selfish either, you know. Like there, there's some kind of there's some kind of fine line to it, and and you have to be the judge, True. you know. But because because yeah. we're really here like to improve ourselves. And the way we have to sort of do that is like by helping others. <laughs> so, it, you yeah. Know, it, but there's also there's also sort of like a fine line that you have to like do it in a balanced way. Like they say, um, you know, when you're on a plane, they always say don't assist other passengers 
until you put on your own oxygen mask. <laughs> you <know? laughs> right, like right. It's, it's true. Yeah. You have to you have to be on stable ground and to, before you go helping other people. But you know, it's like there's sort of a fine line. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I recommend if you're interested in getting involved in service, join the join the cantina you know, on Saturday nights. No, the cantina no, <laughs> it has uh, plenty of people no, there. There's, there's an opening. There's an opening. <laughs> <laughs> there's an opening. <laughs> yeah. so, but you know, it's it's one of those things too. It's like you can't just you're not gonna just get it. Like I don't have it. You know, yeah, I'm mm -hmm. working on it. You know, so you, you can't just like like see and get it. It's like you have to sort of work for it. You know? Right, right, right. And, but I mean, in order to work for it, we need we need you know people like Artie Kardec, Alan Kardec to to write these these books. You know, yeah. it's, not, it's not like he got elevated and he's like you know I'm gonna worry about myself and not write these books. You know, he right. went through a lot of you know he's very diligent and very you know yeah that's true. you know he loved you know spent a lot of time. That's true. Time. Yeah. So, so well, of course. Also keep in mind that he didn't write the book quite it. That's true. That's he true. was assisting right. in the development of the book. But, right. right. He he was. Uh, he may have posed questions, but others gave the answer. Yeah. yeah he was. He was very. He's very. You know. He was very. Um. He was very interested and very. You know. Dedicated to it, and then he was rewarded. You know. Yeah. Through that. Right. I mean, I was rewarded, but I mean. Definitely no. Was, when he said he didn't want to do it, and then the group of judges and and physicians, friends of him, said, "No, you you are the person." To do it because you have this this profile this this attitude that will that it's perfect for this type of work so we will organize it because uh, back then or until today uh, you know spiritualism they, they did not get together to put something like spiritualism and they could they could but they didn't they did could not. have but didn't they did not so yeah you're absolutely right. So um, Alan Kardec mentions when he's talking to the priest that um, <clears throat> like they respect other people's beliefs, but he says until those beliefs become instruments of persecution. And I thought that was kind of interesting yeah. because mm -hmm. I was like thinking about like we're, we are 150 or 160 years later and how, how like how things change, you know, like things, things have changed, but things are still kind of the same in a certain way. Like when you think about, like I hate to bring up examples like the, like the Westboro Church, like you know, going to funerals and and protesting and doing things like that, and like because of their beliefs, and they're kind of becoming instruments of persecution. And they're talking about how spirit is being chased through the streets and insulted, <laughs> you know, back in the day. And and I was actually kind of thinking that probably spiritism, as far as like Alan Kardec's, you know, codification of spiritism, probably came out at the right time because at that time we we're talking about in the you know well into the industrial revolution so we have science becoming like people are turning to science more than they're turning to religion so you have that freedom probably they have that freedom where they could actually start a new philosophy and not worry about being like burned at a stake or something like that you know like <laughs> they still they still had, had to endure a lot of suffering but it probably came at the right time where if it was coming like let's say in the 1600s we had the Salem witch trials and and <laughs> you know Things like that nature through throughout the medieval times of the dark ages. Yeah, yeah, a lot of things were being demystified at that time. Like, like they had like radiation, like the nature of light, and all those things were being spe like dramatic spectrum mm -hmm. um, was all coming out at that time. You're right. So it was it, it, it was like a, it was at a good time, and they had the science to techniques to to back it up or start to. But still today, though, we're still finding that like people are being persecuted for their beliefs. Oh right, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, all the major all the major religions do that. <laughs> It's it's sad though. To, I mean, because like 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 Juan said, it was like this priest sounded very open minded because he was kind of saying like I couldn't believe that somebody in the church would would do something like that. And <clears throat> Alan Kardec like right away mentions like top level people in the church. You know, the bishop, um, the educated and people, pastors giving sermons that saying that 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 you should this is what you should do. You should go out and <laughs> and basically persecute the spiritists. Um, so I, I didn't know if anybody had anything to, like, I don't know, that kind of stirred up a lot of emotion in me, I guess they say, you know, just think, things are always, you know, changing, like, I want to say we've gotten better, but in some ways, like, we're still, like, in, in the same place we were 160 years ago. Absolutely, yeah. Um, all right, so moving on, then. Um, so when Alan Carter is talking to the priest, he's actually mentioning about the struggle between um, 
the church and spiritism. Um, he's saying that basically, if, if there is a struggle, then the spiritists aren't the ones to blame. But I was wondering, do you guys think that we're still struggling with this today between the church and spiritists, or how do you feel about that? There are certain areas that, yes. Yes. There are certain areas still, even in Brazil, that they face this kind of... Uh, Stigma? Uh, no, it's... Um, no, it's, uh, it's just that, you know, like we still, we still, we still have racism and so many things that are so that's still very present in our lives, and it is not different. Uh, there is a, a town in Brazil that was founded by spiritists only, Palmelo. Palmelo is the name, so everybody there. The spiritists, so they give, they help each other. It's a huge community. It's a city, and I have a friend that went there, and she said that you can have like, uh, uh, you can get passes anytime. There's so many places that it's just free, free like healing, free stuff everywhere, and they are all spiritists, and it's and it's growing, but it's still there's there's a lot of. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of uh, questions about spiritism, especially because, you know, Brazil is so rich in uh, so many religions and rituals, and people tend tend to mix um, philosophies and religion, like we see sometimes um, uh, spiritist centers that are very connected to uh, uh, Catholicism, and they they look like they have they have pictures instead of statues, they have pictures of Basilio uh, de Menezes and the other you know the spirits like uh, Emmanuel, Andre Luis, and they have uh, pictures, and they it looks like it remind you it can remind you, and the way that they go, they dress all white, but it doesn't mean that it's a uh, it's not a spiritual center. It is, but it has this little touch of religion. So I see, I, I, I know that they still face some problems and some troubles, and depending on the area, the more, you know, the, the less um, educated they are, they tend to judge like, oh, this is like a voodooism, and that's what they think. Voodooism. They connect spiritism with the voodooism. Which is in things. And, and, you know, we're, we're all still evolving, right? So, and this is, they talk about the globe, right? And I, I know, uh, I think you might, I've heard, and I'm not from Brazil, I'm born uh, in this country. Hmm. And, but I've heard that, you know, there's a, I think there's a fine, there's a hard line between like Baptists and Spiritists when it comes to maybe Brazilians and, and it's, it's almost like this is my belief right so that but from my chair I, I don't know um, that so I can't answer the question directly but what I will say mm -hmm. is being raised Catholic um, you know the Bible that I read reading things it doesn't have any reference to reincarnation because it's been removed there's actually two places three, 335 and I think 553 you may know um, and the Bible and, and there's actually a parable I think maybe Stanley I may have talked about this with he talked about uh, I think John the Baptist or someone else that will be coming right and so there's a little you know there's a little sneaky parable right but if you read what it says when they interpret there's still in the Bible left there's a reference to someone coming back again I think it might have been Abraham or Elias. 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 Um, but there's two references that were completely it removed by the Roman Catholic Church. It was Jesus. Jesus. Jesus was asking, who do they say I am? Um, and then they said, oh, they said that you were uh, John the Baptist. And they said, no. Elias. Or Elijah. 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 Elijah's Thank like, you. I don't know if it's different. Anymore. It's Elijah. Elijah. He says, yeah. No, he's already come. Back. He said, "No, it's he already came, but they didn't recognize him." He so, said, so like, again, so from my bringing, like there was parts literally removed, right, from the Roman Catholics. You know, they kind of pulled it out. These are humans, 
who make mistakes, right? Who are still evolving, still trying to figure out all the truths. Sure. So we need to we need to understand this. I think Spiritism teaches this, right? That hey, okay, so we're all evolving at our own level, and and as as we individually, and then as groups of us cling together, you know, we help expose the thing, our truths, and we create centers and we educate others. So I think. Um, you know, the contrast exists because we're all evolving at the rate we're evolving. And the groups of, of interest groups, right? So the Spiritist Center has a particular interest group in Spiritism. And we will evolve and our communities will now get exposure to this. And hopefully it will grow and move, you know, beyond this city and the next city and the next state. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I witnessed it. But again, my reference was going back hundreds of a thousand, a few thousand years, right? That there's still uh, don't want to hear about that. No, it can't be. And then others removing truths that were written, were witnessed by apostles of Jesus, and it's taken out of a book that we're reading today. So again, um, you know that is what it is. So um, and it exists. But I think the movement, right, of learning more. Uh, identifying that, look, these are extensions of the truths we've already learned. So let's go learn more about this. Oh, and there's spirits involved. Oh, and we're, we can we can see that it's communications of spirits. The Bible about the transfiguration when uh, the, the two of the apostles saw it, Jesus with Moses and uh, whatever, I, I, I don't remember exactly. But what, when one of the apostles said to the other was, uh, this is very important that we see this. It's like, it's, an, it's very important that we see this. And this is, you know, what Spiritism is about. It's very important that we really believe this experience. You know? I, I got that. Yeah, you know, as, as I was contemplating this, what we read for, for a few days, and I started thinking about the church and like, the way Alan Kardec is talking about the church, they really were more of like a political force than they were a I agree. philosophy. I agree. Um, and it's it's just interesting. I started thinking about how, like the and, and this is mainly mainly I want to say the Catholic Church. And I'm not like a history buff or anything, but I know that they had their influence in like many different countries, and they crossed borders, and they were had political power, like you know, of their own. Um, so. And that and that obviously like has to like corrupt their message, you know, with the desire. Mm. Um, and then because mm. Alan Kardec talks about the goal of Spiritism being to combat um, disbelief. You know, that the idea that once we die, that right. we turn into nothing. And right. that really like cause right. I, I started to think like what like what would I would say like what would you guys say like just coming in here. That the goal of spiritism is, you know, <laughs> when we come in, we get so many different messages. Like um, I, I remember coming to a few meetings, and you know, we would talk about different things. And then, like, I remember coming to one lecture, and the guy used references from uh, Gandhi and Mother Teresa and <laughs> and Jesus and Buddha, like, and they were all mixed in one lecture. I forget what his subject was, but I thought, like, isn't this cool? Like, we can. Like we can draw from so many different sources, um, but what would you guys feel is is like the goal of spiritism in your own words? Like, how would you feel about that? It's not one goal. I, I couldn't say there's a goal. I think um, we all, well, for for my philosophy, okay, you know, the wish that the goal is very clear. We have one goal. That's for us to become one with that Holy Spirit that's within inside of us. Okay. And Spiritism certainly is bringing me a heck of a lot closer to it. My meditations now are totally different than they were before I, in the short time that I'm here. My blocks are changing. In fact, I wrote one today, uh, Artificial Intelligence. I don't, I don't know how it's going to be uh, received. I will read at the end. Hmm? I will read for us at the end. Okay. Okay. But the but the one goal remains the same is to recognize who we are, that we are spirit, having a human experience. We are in 
at the gate people could know their own spirit. It's inside of it because when they do it, you change, you change it because you detach from the materialist and when you, when you let go of all of it, what's left? Oh, that's, where, that's who you are. Oh, I'm here. I'm here the whole time. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's helping people to detach. All the little things nice. people say, like, like, like the person who dies with the most toys wins. You only, yeah. Like when they say you only live once. Um, you know, every man for himself. Bogus. Bogus. Like, Bogus. We have a lot of the things we say, and they're really like pervasive through our culture. And like when you start studying spiritism, you go like, "That's just wrong." Like, you know? yeah, obviously. Wow. <laughs> if you think about it, you only live once. It's pretty accurate. <laughs> I mean, it's very long. But it's just once. <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the just, way they just it. Picky, yeah. you're, you're right, though. That, like, the spirits say like that, that for them, there's no such thing as time. Like There's just one, something that, oh, we, yeah, just that life. helps us sort of figure stuff out. It's the life of the spirit. For, for the spirit, it's just, it's just now. I that's guess that's why meditation is so powerful when you like, meditate yeah, and true. let go of, and you really get in touch with like the present moment, like let everything else go, and it's like, it's kind of trippy. <laughs> well, it's not it's not necessarily the moment, right? Too, it, it's your your yourself. You let go of. Like if you if you um, you can read about the yogis, right? Yoga, and imagine being one of them at that level of, of heightened awareness and being able to sit in the lotus position. And, and connect with your spirit, and you don't even know there's a body at that point. You know, I'm just imagining what this would be like, right? Right. And uh, I'll try it later. I tried this morning. I'm not quite there yet. But, Come on, uh, Tuesday. And we'll so, get there. Yeah, yeah no, I actually understand today. This is really good. We came last week. Um, but no, I like that. So I think part of part of what uh, I'm just extending on Stanley. So. Uh, you know, we need to, we've learned, and we're learning, and those who study spiritism will learn that the most part of you is the spirit, not material flesh and organs. And stuff. So most of you is is energy, not of material, right? So, um, and you're like, wow, that's pretty profound. So the meditation helps you get closer to that and actually quiet your mind so that you can, you know, but that's that, that's what you think is the goal. No, the goal. No, I'm getting to the goal. So connecting to that uh, helps you understand. And for me, what it's helping. And I'm I'm using Stanley's word now, not from tonight, but before. But I think if there was a goal, and everything in the goal is kind of like love, right? Everything's in there, right? You know, um, the purification is a word that Stanley used. I heard it, he said it here several times. Like the purification to purify yourself. And it's, it's like, you know, accomplishing all these virtues, you know, patience and humility and, and uh, uh, charity, compassion, and, you know, all these things that we're learning. Um, and that's part of what we're purifying. So all these virtues that we're accomplishing at some point, you know, the, the purity of ourselves. Um, and I think that would be a, a goal. But like, along the way to that one goal is all these little wins, right? Wow, now I'm more patient. Wow, now I'm, I'm more humble, right? I'm totally humble. You know, maybe there's layers. And I think, to me, that's when I, my initial response was, I don't know there's one goal. But then I remember what Stanley said. It was a good word for me. We're here, you know, as, to evolve, to purify ourselves, right? And so our thinking, our actions, and our doing are all pure love, compassion, you know, always. So that would be a goal. But there's a hundred million things in there to reach the goal. Is the way I'm seeing it. So I'm just going to focus on the few that I need to be working on now. It's pretty complicated, though, like what you're and saying. It, and I'm, it is. I'm trying to think that's like why. simple terms. Like, when I first walked through the door of the Spiritist Center, like, what was my goal? You know, and, and like, why did I stay? And because I can't, like, I can't say, like, I came to the Spirit Center thinking, like, God, I want to get purified. You know? <laughs> I don't know, like, what I was thinking, to be honest with you. It's been, it's been a while. Um, like, what about you guys <laughs> when you came in? Well, I'm the last one. She came a long time ago. She's been studying a long time. What do you mean? I'm the youngest here. 
everything you guys everything you guys said it, it's true. It's like you know it's trying to ask those questions, trying to you know have a deeper understanding of, of your yourself and your place, you know, in, in the world and in the universe. So I think I think also I think well, Alan Kardec's goal was to bring this you know to the public, but but to provide you know physical evidence and proof of it to kind of you know bring more people you know to understand what's what what spiritism actually is. But I think the goal for each person is, is different, you know, because once you ask those questions and once you start to, you know, see who you really are, then your purpose is going to be different from everybody else. So ultimately, your goal would be different from everyone. You, you're, we, we, we all start have to have place. right. You all start. We all, you all start a different place, and, when, and right. we, we we're looking for the same kind of thing. But then I think ultimately, if you if you ask questions and you look deep enough, and, and you you know, you really study it, then I think that, you know, everyone will, will ultimately have their own, will find their own, their own goal. So true what Manny said, and, uh, and we say um, that this, uh, Spiritism has this triple uh, kind of idea, the, the philosophy, the religion, and science, and when I, when I started, when I first started, the science, was the one that attracted me the most. But then it was changing. But and now I try to, I, I'm more like familiar with everything, but I was mainly for many years, I was liking the science part of it. So I like what he said, I take his words as mine. I just want to well, add, it was interesting the way you, you said that. I remember something, Luigi, the founder of this center, one of the founders. You know, it's like, you know, in this incarnation, right? You know, he, he said, "Well, if you only accomplish one of those virtues, <laughs> you did good." So, like, if, you know, what you know, one of the things you're trying to overcome is you want to be patient. Just one thing, you have to spend a whole one whole incarnation from zero to eighty to learn how to be patient. Well, but wow, then we're, we're it, really that slow is slow progress. Because but, if you if you really study this and if you learn to apply those things, you will start to have a clue of what you're doing here. You start to get a lot of clues of what you're doing and what you what what is your the tendency of your spirit, the tendency of your like what kind of energy you leave when you leave this room. So that when you don't have a clue, and then you try to apply, get one virtue and work on one virtue. Because it's, it's kind of, you know, more complicated than that. I've been thinking about that. I was just making a comment that, like, maybe that's reference to maybe, um, you know, there's a lot of people. Right. That's only the one. And maybe right. not even the one. Right. Um, like and when, so, I, when I first wow. found spirituality, like, I found spirituality because I was in a lot of, like, pain. Like, the kind of pain you mm. can't see a doctor because you can't tell them where it hurts. Mm. You know? And, and that's what kind of brought me here. So I've been thinking about the last 10 years. And I'm like, the kind of problems I have today are like a lot better than the problems I had when I came mm -hmm. in. But I'm like, I have different problems now where I'm trying to like be a better person and trying to like practice love and trying not to, you know, get angry so much. You know, it's like my biggest thing is like working on just not getting angry, <laughs> you know. It's, it's not about not getting angry, but like recognizing like why I'm angry and trying to find like the root of it, you know. Mm, that's what but, it sense. but it's like, yeah. it's like. You, yeah, it's like what you said though. It's like I started from that point Deeper like ten years ago, and now I'm kind of coming to like I have a whole new set of problems now. <laughs> right. And my goals have changed, you know, the last ten years. It's it's funny when we talk about like anger and like patience because if you read if you read the Bible, you know, like when Jesus is apostle say certain things, like Jesus gets angry at them, right? He gets he loses his patience, right? He gets frustrated. It's like so we're talking about having no anger and having no 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 patience, but you know there are things that are always gonna frustrate you. You know, like if right. you talk, if you're trying to, you know, hammer. I mean, kind of an extreme example. You're trying to hammer a, a nail somewhere, and it's not going in. You're gonna try harder and harder until you finally get it in there. Cause that's you know what you're trying to do. You know, so I mean, I think there is a little bit of I think there is a little bit of room for you know getting angry, a little bit of room for getting Absolutely. you know losing your patience and getting frustrated. Cause, yeah. I, I mean, I read the Bible the other day, and some you know, Peter or somebody asked a question. He's like, do you still not understand what I'm saying? Like, he got mad at him. He got frustrated. He's like, you know, I'm, right. I'm, I'm talking English. Come on, people. He's like, come on. You know, it's, like, <laughs> it's part of our nature, absolutely. You know? So yeah. finding ultimate, like, you know, but the understanding, no anger and no patience. The understanding you know, of that nature is what it changes everything. That's why we have new problems. 
Well, let me, I'd like to say that the, one of the things that that, that the contrast, right? So it, it's a person who's doing it, they feel the contrast, and the person who's receiving it feel the contrast. And that contrast is what teaches you, right? So you know, sometimes you have to be stirred, right? You think of it, the kid, you know, who's doing it, it leaves a wrapper on the floor, you know, yeah. you never, the trash never makes it in the trash can or whatever they're doing, right? Uh, you know, at some point you have to be stern with it and you know look the kid in the eye and you know whatever you have to do is like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so again then, you know sometimes that contrast at least here in humans this is what we use for our teaching that contrast allows us to know what we don't like um, and it creates enough oomph behind it to go whoa yeah this needs to be corrected right so even the person saying it, it feels a little guilty sometimes about being harsh, right? It's and then like the person receiving like, well, it feels so good when you get up. It feels so good, <laughs> yeah. So again, so I, I get that. So um, and that's that's human, you know, that's uh, the human uh, uh, characteristic, I guess, is how we do that. And it's, it's mm -hmm. for our benefit in the end, even though it's not so nice for that moment, maybe. Um, but we uh, just learn the first time. We wouldn't have to keep like banging our heads into the wall. <laughs> Yeah, there was someone who said, you know, how long do you think you're going to keep doing that? Because right. you're going to keep having it until you figure it out and you uh, learn it. And then you won't have to do that anymore. <laughs> now, so the things that you're doing you know, yourself, you end up in a situation. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to finish and then we can continue. You said to use the word problem a few times. I've been coming across a few things, and I think even Yonada went on a trip. Uh, um, she went on a vacation to Jamaica or somewhere. She came back. She says, oh, no, I don't use the word problem anymore. Uh, and then we use the word situation. Because the, the word problem has this negative connotation, connotations attached to it, right? And uh, there was a seminar I was listening to. There is to, a, some even a better word than situation. Uh, and so the situation you know is the thing. Is. I keep hearing this word situation. You know what it is? It is an even is better it? one. Come, challenge. Oh, yeah. oh, we're not. If you change the chair. word problem to challenge, then you can take action on it. You can it's solve very it. Very positive. Well, that's good. Just think about it. So now you have something you're going to solve. First step is to accept the challenge. Right. Right. <laughs> well, that's the hardest step, isn't it? Yeah. So, anyway, so just to complain on words, something that is helping twist and turn some of the things that I'm hearing, and I'm now using this word. I like word. the word problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what's, the, what's wrong because with you problem? Because you cannot have a problem unless there is a solution to it, yeah. right? And if there's no solution to it, there's no problem. Yeah. I don't have a problem with the word problem. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a problem. I find the word problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> you find problems. That sounds like work. Challenging. They say if you're in, in a room full of people and everybody would put their problems in the middle of the room, by the end of the you by the end of the room, <laughs> take your problems back. <laughs> <laughs> so I take my problem, you have your challenges, have a nice day. Well, I got my situation, let's go. So some people, the problems are kind of more like baggage, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so well, I'm sorry, I went over my time. No just, problem. My ego. It's another problem. No problem. It's another problem. Always like that. No, so we got to wrap up our talk. No, about. it's okay. So if anybody listening on the internet, if you're out there, Next week, we're going to be back on Chapter 3 of What is Spiritism, talking, Alan Kardec talking to the priest, and I'm not sure what questions, but we're going to start with the fourth question for the priest. And if you're on our WhatsApp group, we're going to post it, we can email it, in touch with Stephen McPherson or Cynthia Cavalcanti, and we'll make sure that you can wow. get the links. Every time you're really impressed, I can... Oh my gosh. He's going to have to work on some of these problems. Even Brazil can so, pronounce my name. So for people on Facebook, we're going to say <coughs> good night. And for people here, we get to find out what happens soon. So good night. Okay. Okay, we're going to read.